also wrote an article for the Los Angeles Times in which you speak about the transformation yeah. uh, of Obama from a transformational yeah, to trans candidate to yeah. a transactional yeah. president. Yeah. And of course, there is a lot of disappointment in this country yeah. Yeah. because somehow the hope seems to have slipped to the wayside yeah. and has taken place for compromises that seem unpalatable yeah. for many people here. So what happened there? Well, you know, that's a huge question for a lot of people. But I mean, I, you know, I mean, there's what happened and then there's why it happened. I, the two different questions. I mean, what happened was that, that the country had been mobilized uh, to an incredible degree um, and right at the moment when it could have been put to work advancing a very aggressive, progressive agenda, especially given the state of the economy, it was put to sleep. And that was a strategic choice um, that uh, the administration made. Um, apparently they believed that they could um, negotiate their way to deep reform, which has never happened in our country, um, and that that would be accomplished through insider politics, not through public mobilization. Um, you know, and it was a huge error. And uh, what the motivations behind it, the choices involved, uh, I you know, can only speculate. But um, what ought to have been an, a great teaching moment for the country about wealth and about government and about all that, uh, and a far better health care reform deal. Uh, and you know, whether it was a combination, um, it's as if, uh, it's as if the president, um, lost any understanding of power. <laughs> uh, I mean, or executive leadership. The president had never been in a position of executive leadership. And executive leadership, um, requires, um, uh, it's very different. It, it's very different than uh, being a mediator, uh, and he was so drawn to this whole mediation kind of role when what was needed was very strong executive leadership, and what that has to do with in terms of personality, in terms of philosophy, in terms of whatever. I don't know, but the result was was pretty bad. It also seems that he was such a brilliant communicator. And that he basically he stopped, communicating. stopped communicating. Well, and you and yes, and so you sort of say, well, what happened here, you know? Um, and because uh, you know that race speech was one of the great speeches in American politics. Of course, that was something he was deeply invested in. Uh, maybe he didn't have the same appreciation for the economic crisis the country was in at the time. But no, that's that's those are the those are the now. But to not to be fair. Uh, every progressive and liberal group in America bought it. I mean, um, there were all these coalitions in Washington around climate change, around labor law reform, around immigration reform. They all became passive. They all took direction from the White House. They all um, confused access with power. And when they should have been out there raising hell, weren't. Uh, and we're sort of, oh, well, the president says they'll take care of it. Well, that also has never happened in our history. It's so ahistorical. I mean, change in this country has been the result of powerful social movements uh, mobilizing uh, pressure uh, on responsive politicians, and sometimes not responsive politicians. But I mean, it's been this combination. It's never occurred within the political apparatus itself. It's just never. That's not how civil rights happened. It's not how the conservative movement happened. It's not how women's movement happened. Environmental movement. Our whole history is one of an interplay between movements and, and, and between movements and moral politics, and we the, because the political system itself is so fragmented and so non-representative. I mean, you know, the, just the electoral college, the the whole way first member uh, uh, first by the post single member districts built into the institutions of American politics are all these veto points which go back to the fact that the founders really were very fearful of democracy and they had to protect slavery. And so we created these institutions that were very, very weak. Uh, and so it's not like in Britain you get to be the government, then you get to decide stuff. It doesn't happen that way. 
And so we've had to build these movements outside of government that then pressure politics and parties and so forth. And that's the critical piece. On our website, globalleadership.tv, you will find additional footage, other dialogues with innovation leaders from around the world, and also the hands-on practices that help them and their organizations to move from inspiration to real change.